Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, yippee, everybody! Welcome to the show. <laughs> coming to you, I don't know where that came from. Yippee! yippee. Thank you for joining us today. Coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and Ashley is apparently a thumbnail. I am. Also here, John Schnepp. Yippee! Anakin and stuff like that things. Hi. Yippee! Also here, Mark Ellis. Welcome to Quarter Movie Talk. It's going to be a podcast racing good time today. <laughs> podcast racing good time. If you couldn't tell, we watched, we did our Attack of the Clones mm -hmm. commentary yesterday. Mm -hmm. It is now up and online. We just haven't made it public yet. We'll make it public uh, uh, this afternoon. It'll be public and up for those you've been waiting so desperately to see it. We got to take all those F-bombs out of it first. <laughs> yeah, after watching our uh, Phantom Menace commentary, the Attack of the Clones commentary is already just sitting on our server, waiting yep. to be revealed to the world. World. Just brewing <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Waiting for everybody to watch it and all it's good as hey guys, as happens sometimes. Uh, a piece of news dropped uh, after we had already written all of our show notes. And uh, this one comes from our friend Umberto over at uh, Heroic Hollywood. He actually wrote Schnepp and I this morning, said, guys, look. I got four independent sources confirming this, which four. is what which is what you should do. Four. And he said, I know the identity of Star-Lord's father, which was the big mystery that the first Guardians of the Galaxy ended on was, who is Star-Lord's dad? Now, you see, uh, which way am I pointing? This way, right here, okay. <laughs> Once, if you don't want to know, now I don't think this is a spoiler because I believe that this information is going to be part of the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 marketing once the marketing starts. But if you really want to avoid knowing anything at all, that, wait till that little Fantastic Four 2 button on the side there changes color. That's when you know we've changed topics. Uh, so just hang on there to that. You've been warned. Here we go. According to uh, our friend Mayimbe, who is going to be on Collider Heroes yeah, with us yeah. this afternoon, uh, he claims that from four independent sources that Star-Lord's father is none other than Captain Marvel. Now, for some of you who are scratching your heads and saying, biologically, how does that work? Um, it's not the Captain Marvel we know. It's actually the original Captain Marvel. And this kind of makes sense. Schnepp, you want to explain it to everybody? Sure. It's the original Captain Marvel from Marvel's uh, you know, universe, not the DC Shazam Captain Marvel. But they basically have a Kree character named Captain Marvel. Now, in the movie version, they'll probably be shifting the origin. It's going like a going back bit. to the Golden Age, right? Yeah, this yeah. is, or I'd say, Silver Age. There was, they, it was in the '60s that they introduced this Captain Marvel. So uh, he's uh, he's Kree. He fights a lot of people. Then he changes outfits a little bit later and gets that more traditional blue and red one. But it starts out with he's got this kind of weird kind of white and green armor and a, a weird mask if you go uh, on ebay you can see all the people speculating they're already starting to it's increasing from 99 dollars to 500 dollars every hour so <laughs> get sweaty get that kind of bought it about five minutes ago <laughs> yeah no i no, actually i didn't i resisted i was like you know what i'm not going to get into the speculative uh you know market i did buy all those guardians of the galaxy and really <laughs> that really did pay off thank you all you racket ra racket <laughs> raccoon fans it was, it was a racket um but yeah, I think uh, I think this is a smart move. I mean, because a lot of people were talking about making it War Warlock or Adam Warlock and making that the dad. And plus, we don't know for sure. There could be four independent sources. They could have all read the same screenplay that might have just been released as a way to trick people. Oh we yeah, don't, those four look. Those four independent sources could have all heard it from the same dude right. selling cigarettes behind the Seven <laughs> Eleven. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's, it's possible. Hey kids, you want to yeah. buy some scripts? Yeah. 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 But I mean, this is what you're. I mean, Umberto did what you're supposed to do. Yeah. He's got multiple sources on this. So I, I've got no reason not to believe him. And look, this is the other thing that uh, the reason that this makes sense is because, you know, at the end of the last movie, it was uh, Nova Prime was saying, you know, whoever your father is, it's from a race we haven't seen in a long time. The speculation then is this Marvel or Marvel, as he's as he's called, is going to be an Inhuman. Mm -hmm. Now that makes sense because Inhumans, up until recently, something that nobody has seen for ages and ages and ages. Um, Marvel is really trying to force Inhumans down our throats. I mean, real, they want so badly the Inhumans to be the new X-Men. And I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I mean, that's that's their mission, that's their goal, and they're gonna do what they can. So they're, they are all in on Inhumans, working really hard for it. And it 
fits in with everything that we know that they've said about his father so far. Right. It just fits. And I believe there was a version of the comics where Carol Danvers, who we now traditionally known as Captain Marvel, that's who she got her powers from in the first place. Right. So bringing this guy into the universe not only serves the purpose of giving us Star-Lord's father, it will give us an introduction, possibly, into the Carol Danvers Captain America. Possibly. It just fits in a lot of ways. Mark, you heard about all this. How does this sit with you? It makes a lot of sense from the release date schedule, too, because Guardians of the yes. Galaxy, they moved that up. Maybe this was one of the reasons they moved it up so they could get that movie out before Inhumans and before the Captain Marvel Carol Danvers movie comes out. It makes a lot of sense to me, too, from a perspective of marrying the wars, of getting the comic book and the Marvel Cinematic Universe to tie up. Not exactly, but when you have the Kree and you have them who were doing experiments on human beings and that created Inhumans. So now that's going to be why Peter Quill has these special powers that he inherited from his father. This is exciting to me. I'm not so sure they're going to use this in the marketing, though, because you already sold Guardians of the Galaxy 2 because people love the first one so much. So you can sell it as this new adventure. Then in the midst of the movie, you reveal what's going on with Peter Quill's father. That's the big Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> who is your daddy moment. And then that's one of the marketing plays for Inhumans and Captain Marvel. Now, also in, in the old comic books, Marvel, as, as he mm -hmm. was known, he was actually a foil of Thanos. Apparently, he would battle Thanos and was able to resist a lot of his power, which could explain why Peter was able to hold on to the Infinity Stone for as long as mm -hmm. he did. I mean, like I said, there's just a lot. Look, it's possible that this is not true. It is possible that this is not true. I'm just saying it does seem to fit fit all the puzzles. The circles are going into the circle holes, the squares are going into the square holes. It seems to be finishing. Ashley's trying so hard to I bite know. her tongue right now. That's she kind of what she said, kind of what he said, I don't know. But, um, and so if this works out, this is a nice move on their part, and uh, I like how it works. She yeah. not, knowing the, the history of the, the comics a little bit better, how does this sit with you? Does this, If this is true, do you like it? It's a real smart move on Marvel's part. I mean, honestly, it's like it's their it's their brand name character, Captain Marvel. So it's like they not only want to introduce the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel, but they also want to like establish the Captain Marvel Marvel character in the Kree universe that they've already set up in Guardians of the Galaxy and other expansive, you know, space opera style, you know, whatever Phase Four is going to be. I'm sure they're going to have like I don't know if they're going to go with a Moon Dragon movie, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure Warlock <laughs> is in the is in the future. So you know, I think it's a, it's a cool way to introduce uh, the Captain Marvel older version of the character and also the Terrigen mists that are on Earth creating the Inhumans. I think it's just it feeds it feeds in really well. So smart move. It sounds it exciting. It sounds fun too yeah. because this is the first time I've thought of Inhumans as something you can have a lot of fun with. But the fact that they're going to be putting it in Guardians of the Galaxy potentially means you can have some laughs with this. You can you can explore the lore a little bit before you go on to the own Inhumans movie. So I'm really looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy too, even more so now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's get on to the first official story of the day. All right. As many of you know, Fox Studios' Fantastic Four 2, a sequel to the recent Fantastic Four reboot, was scheduled to come out in the summer of 2017. Recent comments by producer Simon Kinberg suggested that Fox still intended to make the sequel. However, according to Box Office Mojo, Fox has very quietly pulled Fantastic Four 2 from their release schedule and as of now has no project release date. John, is Fantastic Four 2 at Fox officially dead? Ah, uh, look, here's the thing. I I remember when, uh, long before Fantastic Four came out, and we were starting to feel maybe just a little bit optimistic. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you straight up, I was feeling a lot optimistic about Fantastic Four. And, but even then, and Christian was feeling optimistic too, but even then, Christian, I remember saying that, you know, he did not think it was going to meet that 2017 release date. Mm -hmm. He said he would eat his shoe if he didn't meet that release date. And then they moved it by two weeks. And we said, no, 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 that doesn't count. You're still eating your shoe, guys. Yeah, <laughs> just moving two weeks, that doesn't count. Then we saw the movie. Yeah. And right. the, the <laughs> weather changed. Yeah. The atmosphere kind of changed. Now, just a few weeks ago, as Ashley was pointing out, you know, Simon Kimber's crammed out, oh, no, no, we got vision for this. We got belief in this. And then ever so shh, very <laughs> quietly, Fox did not announce that they were pulling it off the release schedule. This was box office mojo through their release calendar. That's how this came out. Fox, shh. Right. We're, we're murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Look, Kenneth Branagh yeah. is doing Murder on the Orient Express. Isn't that great? Yoink, take yeah. out Fantastic Four 2. And, and look, it just makes sense. Look, I don't know 
if them pulling this off its release date. Because look, on one hand, this could just make sense that they're just pulling it off the release date because, you know, the last movie was such an unequivocal mess that they got to go back to the drawing board and we need time and there's no way we'd have a movie ready for 2017. Or it's what is, I think, probably more likely Fox going, it's time for us to wave the flag. You know, we've taken four cracks at this so far. Four cracks at the Fantastic Four. And ain't none of them worked. And maybe it's just time for them to go, we give up. We've got something working out great with the X-Men universe. People are excited about Deadpool. Gambit is even getting buzz. We can probably say we've got it covered with all the properties we got. We can let Fantastic Four go. And, and I just think it's time. So I will not be shocked if we find out that they're going to be stubborn about it and they're digging in their heels. Like, no, 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 no. Fantastic Four 2, 2018. But right now, I think it point, all signs point to them giving up on Fast, Fantastic mm. Four. What do you think, Shep? Are we going to see from Fox a Fantastic Four 2? Absolutely not. I think all of us were waiting for them to pull the release date. It's just when were they going to do it? So even though they tried being slick and sly about it, that's why it's on every every news <laughs> site. They're like, they pulled it. It's like every you couldn't have uh, couldn't not see it if you're online last night. It was like everywhere. So I think everyone was waiting for them to admit defeat in a certain sense. Like, no, it's not. It didn't work. This isn't going to have a, a fan. There's not going to be a Fantastic Four two set in this universe. If they do anything, they'll bring in Brian Singer. But I don't think they're even going to do that. I don't think they're going to do an X-Men versus the Fantastic Four. I think what they're going to do is they're going to go back to Marvel and say, you can have Fantastic Four and Galactus and Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom as long as you give us the ability to make toys out of the X-Men. Because Marvel, Disney has been really, really smart about their strategy. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know you have X-Men and you have Fantastic Four. You can't have video games. You can't have toys. We're gonna minimize those characters in the comic books, if not cancel them altogether. You're not gonna see them in our posters. You're not gonna see them anywhere. We're gonna destroy them in the eyes of Marvel fans. So it's not gonna work with X-Men. X-Men is still gonna keep going. It's a great film series. It, you know, we got X-Men Apocalypse. We got several other television shows coming out with X-Men. Fantastic Four and all of the characters that are wrapped into Fantastic Four, I think kind of should go back to Marvel because a lot of those characters like Galactus and Silver Surfer would work great within the, the setup. And even the Skrulls would work great within the setup that Guardians of the Galaxy already has with the Kree. That's like, it feels like, look, there's somewhere that those guys can make a deal. And like what, what Fox really wants is that video game money. They really want that action figure money. And that's what Marvel's like, no, 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 you're not getting that, son. Sorry, but we might be able to make a deal because they're never going to get X-Men back. That's just not, no, happening. That's not happening. That's never going to happen. Fantastic Four, totally different story. So I think there's there's wiggle room in there. Here's the thing, though, for me with this whole thing about Marvel. I, I can understand Fox wanting those toy rights. If I'm Marvel right now, I ain't giving you nothing. You know why? Because you're dying on the sidewalk. <laughs> I just got to wait here like a vulture and pick the bones when, when the contract laps and you don't go into production on New Fast Test 4. I'm going to sweep and get it. You know, for a long time I've said, right. but also if I'm Marvel, I don't even freaking want Fantastic Four. Nobody read the comic book. They, you know, Fox has totally destroyed the brand, and I'm doing great with everything I got. But then one of the readers pointed this out to me, which I thought was a great point. They said to me, John, getting Fantastic Four, though, if you're Marvel, isn't about Fantastic Four. It's about Galactus, mm -hmm. and it's about and Silver Doom. Surfer, and, and it's Doom. about Doctor Doom. And that made me go, well, okay, wait a minute. Now that's a point. The Fantastic Four themselves proper may be kind of ruined at this point but there's auxiliary characters around it that could still be valuable but i'm still saying if i'm marvel i make no deal i just wait for them to die and not not get those new films well, in there's, production. But there's a deal there to be made i mean it's like and also don't forget fantastic four is marvel's very first character yeah it's the yeah. flagship that's the thing that started and the marvel. very first super team very first super team it's not spider-man it's not hulk it's not it's fantastic four so that's that's something just to honor the legacy of what Marvel is that Disney bought. So there's an bought. emotional element there, too. There's a yeah. lot there. So that's the history of Marvel in general. It started with Fantastic Four. It'd be great to get that back. X-Men, that's Fox's. They're going to have... They never leave. It's <laughs> never going to leave. I say make a deal. 
both studios are smart. They can figure stuff out. It's all about money in the end run when you, it comes with these kind of characters. I agree. Fox is, they've rolled the dice like three times. They're not counting Roger Corman's because that was a different company, but that's true. It didn't work. So I don't, I don't see them putting more money into it. I see them like, let, let's get money out of X-Men. Let's make these series work. Let's have the same kind of thing that Sony has with Spider-Man and Marvel. I think there's a way to work it. You know what? I, I was trying to avoid it, but I suppose we should let Mark into the conversation. Mark, <laughs> what do you have to, what do you think hey about guys, this whole situation? Man, that Fantastic Four movie sucked, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> it really is fascinating to watch you guys talk about the business side of this deal because like John I was like why would Marvel want Fantastic Four at all I do think the Galactus character in Silver Surfer could fit it somewhere eventually in the cinematic universe but as a Marvel fan I don't want to see them try to mess up everything cool they're doing with Guardians of the Galaxy we just got all this possible Inhumans news incorporating them into it let's let all those things play out before we try to involve any other characters now as far as Fantastic Four 2 goes yeah that thing's got to be dead at Fox there's no way Fo nobody at Fox is like hey you know what's really fun losing money and getting panned by critics that's, a, <laughs> that's fantastic that's a great that's, week at the office awesome. i mean at this point i don't even think marvel buys into the emotional thing anymore where it's their first flagship franchise you know like sammy ball was the redskins first quarterback they ain't trotting him out this sunday you know he's dead and i think <laughs> maybe they should <laughs> the redskins might want to think about it i just don't know that marvel cares about fantastic four because it's been so tarnished as a movie property i know fans it's a bummer to see that but it just needs to go away Hang for on. a while What's the next phase? What is it? Uh, it's going to be phase, phase four. Is the yeah. next one, yeah. Phase yeah. four. Oh, oh, oh I all see. Right. We weren't going <laughs> to do it, but then we realized <laughs> the number four is there. Uh, hey. It's feet. It feels feet, like it's feet. Yeah, they're not going to. Fantastic Four in phase five doesn't feel right. <laughs> Fantastic Four, Phase Four. Hmm. But wait, all Phase, phase four, four is going to be just six Fantastic Four <laughs> universe means, movies. That's what? it. The world's going crazy. Yeah. All right. What's next? As many of you know, the upcoming Ridley Scott film Prometheus sequel, Alien Covenant, was made possible by Scott convincing Fox to postpone the planned Neil Blomkamp Alien 5 project. With Scott saying he has plans for several sequels, many have speculated that Blomkamp's project may be off the table. However, Alien franchise star Michael Bean was recently interviewed by Icons of Fright and indicated that he's optimistic the new film will happen and even gave some info about what we could expect in Blomkamp's film. He said the following, They're planning on bringing me and Newt back, and at this point, Newt will be around 27 years old. I know that every actress in Hollywood is going to want to play this one. It's really a passing of the torch between Sigourney and this younger actress who would play Newt. I know they're putting the brakes on Neil's movie just for a little while, but I really think that it would be embarrassing to Ridley and Fox and Sigourney if they just didn't make the movie. Schnepp, what do you make of Bean's comments, and do you think Blomkamp's Alien 5 will ever actually happen uh i believe the the word is tabled it's not gonna happen it's shuttered uh, there's a whole bunch of other words i get what michael bean is saying it he wants to be he would love to be in in alien 5 because his character went out hardcore bad in alien 3 he was dead on arrival mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like everyone who loved aliens when they saw alien 3 was super bummed out because everything that you cared about with the ending of aliens was just thrown away and he wasn't the only one who was dead no, I know. Newt, Newt was dead. <laughs> I mean, that's what I mean. It was like a totally weird, horrifying, like she's on this weird prison world with monks, and it was crazy. It was, a, And I get what Fincher was trying to do, but at the same time, it was just Alien 3 wasn't what anybody who loved Alien and Aliens wanted. No. So this is kind of that like fan kind of film is what I guess when I saw the artwork from Blumkamp, uh, you know, it was like definitely like, wow, they, there's Newt, and there's, uh, you know, what was his name in the movie? Uh, Hicks. Hicks. Oh, yeah. Hicks. Yeah, so... It's like, you know, I get it, but look, Ridley Scott threw down the gauntlet. He's like, look, you know, I'm making Prometheus, Covenant, Alien, whatever you want to call it. I'm making 50 of them. This other movie's not happening. And they're like, oh, yes, Ridley, tabled. So Alien 5 is not happening. There's no way it's going to happen. It's not going to happen next year. It's not going to happen in three years. It's not going to happen in five years. It's just not going to happen. So Mark? I think it could happen in five years. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you're right. It sounds like it's tabled because of Ridley Scott's power and his ability to do what he wants in this universe. It sounds like Michael Bean. We don't know when this conversation between Michael Bean and Neil Blomkamp happened. It might have been when Blomkamp was the next guy in line. It might have been the day before Chappie came out. And everybody was <laughs> so high on this guy. And he's the guy to carry the torch for the Alien franchise. And it's a bummer that we're not going to see this movie for a while, it appears, because I really love what Michael Bean was talking about. Getting Hicks back, getting Sigourney Weaver back. It's a little bit like what The Force Awakens is doing. You're 
bringing back characters from the franchise that we love before we saw movies that we didn't love so much, and we're going to let them usher in the new generation. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. And look, I really like the first Prometheus movie. It looked beautiful. There's a lot of potential there. I want to see more from there, but I'd like to get to Alien 5 too. The only difference, though, between you know what The Force Awakens doing with bringing back characters we love is that this one is taking the previous films and going... Didn't right. happen, everybody. Right. Right. Does not exist, which yeah. we all kind of wish The Force Awakens would do uh, <laughs> with, with the prequels. But no, the, because they, like you said, Hicks is dead in this universe. Mm -hmm. Newt is dead in this universe. Brutally so. So yeah. this this puts a big explanation point <laughs> on those rumors and whispers that we heard that they're just kind of going to pretend like Alien 3 never happened. All, this co absolutely confirms that. I'm going to say this. I agree with everything that you said about, you know, this points toward like Ridley's holding the hammer right now. He's clearly holding the hammer right now. And even though he would be listed as an executive producer on these other ones, I I'm but I'm still going to give it a chance. I will say there's a 30% chance that by 2019 we will have this new Alien film. Mm. This we'll say Alien 5, but since 4 3 doesn't exist, is it the new Alien 3 Redux? I don't know. Right. But I I will give it a 30% chance. That's how far, how high I'm willing to I'd go. I'd buy into that too, because if, if the new Prometheus movie comes out and is well received, and then it could be Ridley Scott saying, "I want to do other projects," and here you go, Neil. Like, that's what I, I'd hope for. Remember, it's not even called Prometheus; it's called Alien Covenant. It's called Alien Covenant. Alien Co so then yes. the second one is also going to be because in Ridley Scott's world, Alien something something. I was like, wait, so, what's that, Neil? You want to do Alien five? Something? You know, what? I'm going to change my name in my movie. Yeah. Now it's called Alien, Alien. Covenant. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do about it? Without numbers either. So now it's not even part of your weird numbering system because Alien. <laughs> Five already sounds weird. If I got Alien Covenant, son, sorry. But yeah, you're like Alien Redux, Alien Back in Time. What are you going to call your thing with like rewriting history? It's not going to happen. <laughs> Alien Three returns again. I know, right? <laughs> Three point five again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next part, which we call a little segment called Buy or Sell. Here's how this works. In front of her ass, she's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So Ashley, what do we got? According to a report in The Hollywood Reporter, actress Angelina Jolie is the number one choice by Universal Pictures <laughs> to star in a planned Bride of Frankenstein project. The report also claims that the studio, still enjoying the biggest year in its history, is also interested in Jolie returning for Wanted 2. The article insinuates that Jolie's current movie, By the Sea, which she directed and stars in with her real-life husband Brad Pitt, was greenlit by the studio in order to get her to possibly take one or both of these roles. Mark, do you buy or sell that Angelina Jolie will appear in either Wanted to or Bride of Frankenstein. I mean, I'm going to buy one of them happens, and it sounds like Universal, after having the biggest year in any studio's history, is getting yeah. a little wonky with spending money. It's like me after I win 50 bucks at Blackjack in Vegas. I'm like, ladies, who wants a steak? I'm buying. I, 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 would, I would rather see her in Wanted to Bride of Frankenstein. It's Universal just has not had that much success rebooting their classic monster franchises like they wanted to do, like Dracula Untold. Benicio, Benicio is a wolf man. Yeah, it just, yeah. It, none of it has really worked so far. And it just seems like Angelina Jolie in The Bride of Frankenstein has so much to lose because that can be such an embarrassment for two hours. It could be good. It could be good. And it's something that I'd be intrigued to check out. But that could be so embarrassing. That could be a huge black eye on your resume when you're coming off by the sea, which a lot of critics didn't like either. Wanted 2, on the other hand, was a movie that I enjoyed. I liked what that did. It took a lot of chances. It didn't hit all of them out of the park, but it was a fun movie to watch, and I could see her and James McAvoy's character going on another mission somewhere. Yeah, I, 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 I do believe in this theory that... You know what, we'll let Angelina do this pet project first because we see this happen a lot in mm -hmm. the studio system. Okay, we really want this director or this talent on something. They've got a passion project. All right, well, we saw that with Michael Bay, right? Mm -hmm. We'll let you do Pain and Gain. You come and do back and do Transformers again. So we see a little bit of tit for tat a lot. Now, By the Sea has not only been a critical failure, it's like in two weeks of release, it's made less than a million dollars. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody wants to go see it. Um, so there's that. I can't see Angelina wanting to come back and wear that outfit, though. <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's anything good that can come out of that. Now, any, I'm a fan of Angelina. I'll see her in anything, and I'll see her in this, too. But you're right. To me, the crown jewel in this story ain't The Bride of Frankenstein. It's wanted, too. 
I unabashedly love one. One. I just <laughs> love that movie. I have so much. The Loom of Fate. Everybody complains about it. Screw y'all. I love the Loom of Fate. I love Morgan <laughs> Freeman <laughs> telling the telling the future by the threads in the new right. quilt. These amazing <laughs> silkworms yeah. of That's the future. Right. I don't know what it is about it. I just really dug it. And I'm sure there's a thousand ways you could bring Angelina back for that. That's the one to me that would work. However, that being said. I don't think either of these are going to happen. I don't think we're going to see Angelina in Bride of Frankenstein. I don't think we're going to see her come back for one or two. And I'm very disappointed by both of those. I hope she does, but I just can't see these being projects she wants to come back to. What do you think, Schnapp? Yeah, I mean, Bride of Frankenstein is a really weird one. I mean, it's like, I mean, we're going to see Victor Frankenstein opening in like the, in an, another week or so. And by the way, who plays Frankenstein in that? Her boy from Wanted, right. James McAvoy. So yeah. you already got McAvoy in there. Um, Wanted 2, it feels like it's a little too late. Didn't it come out like 10 years ago? Wanted? I think it feels like it came out like 10 years ago. And we're going to have it on Rewind very soon. Wanted. Probably, you know? yeah. <laughs> uh, which I, I loved it too. I thought the Loom of Fate was corny. I couldn't remember what it was called. It was like the Weevo thing with the baby Loom silk of the future fate. or whatever. It's super weird. It wasn't in the comic book either. They were like, some of the, whoever the writer or director was like, let's create some kind of weaving thing. I was like, ah, you don't need any of that. Just use the comic. Just, anyway, it's like that kind of thing that always bugs me as a comic book fan. Let's add this extra dumb stuff. Great. You got a dumb weaving thing. So, but I know, but it shows. No, it doesn't. It's just stupid. It's like so, Jethro Tull with the flute. Um, like, we just got to put weaving in every damn movie Look, somehow. You had, enough, you had me with the curving bullets. You don't need the loom. <laughs> you idiots. I mean, I like the movie, too. I loved it. I just didn't need that effing loom. Um, but I, I would, if of the two, if I had to pick, and I was a, the one of the people at Universal, like, let's make this one or that one. I'd say go with one and two, because at least number one was a success. It was fun. Yeah. Bride of Frankenstein, there's too many factors, you know, that could make it not work. You could. I mean, you, you don't want to go straight comedic with Bride of Frankenstein either, but even the original Bride of Frankenstein had some some meta, like, like comedic yeah. winks to it. It, it wasn't like a straight-up horror movie like the first Frankenstein was, so there's a different route you could take than just, we're just trying to scare people, but I just... I just don't see it working. Right. Young Bride of Frankenstein. Get Mel Brooks in there. Yeah. <laughs> now, to throw in a little loop, a little a little callback, if you will, to right. an earlier story, who was one of the co-stars? Had, had a decent amount of screen time, too. Who was one of the co-stars, going back to one of her early stories, in Wanted? A lot of people forget this. Uh, Morgan Freeman. The one who, who eventually starts sleeping with and takes James McAvoy's girlfriend. Ah. Chris Pratt. Oh, Ray nails it for 50 oh. points in the back. That's, Ray Aura. That wow. was Chris Pratt before anybody really knew who Chris Pratt was, nice. which is kind of interesting. All right, what's next? A new trailer for the upcoming Disney animation film Zootopia has just hit the web. Zootopia takes place in the animal-filled city of the same name as it follows optimistic officer Judy Hopps. She discovers that being the first bunny on a police force of big, tough animals isn't so easy. Determined to prove herself, she jumps at the opportunity to crack a case even if if it means partnering with a fast-talking scam artist Fox, Nick Wilde, voiced by Jason Bateman, to solve the mystery. John, buy or sell this trailer for Zootopia. Sell. Um, I'm, I'm going to say, here, and, and here's why. I I was, go earlier today, I, are you okay? I was oh, yeah, over the room. Go on. Oh my okay. God. I have to hear How this. dare you sell okay. it? Okay, so here's the thing. I Earlier today, I was going to buy it because I watched it for the first time because I, I have not been impressed so far. Look, I really like what Disney's been doing with their animated films lately. Big fan. And just because, you know, you don't like something the way it looks at first, it can turn out to be awesome. That being said, um, I watched the trailer early this morning, and I was like, that was really cute. By far, favorite part of the trailer is that sloth, after he hears the joke, <laughs> and the slow motion of his smile, priceless, absolutely priceless. But then I watched it with you guys a little bit later, and I found myself just waiting to get to that part because nothing else in the trailer is entertaining at all. Nothing else in the trailer was funny. Nothing else in the trailer was charming. Then it gets to that big smile thing, and then my heart felt happy again. It's really great. But I realized after watching it a second time, it's like, you know what? No, I don't think this is that good of a trailer. I had one great moment, and everything else was just kind of wasted time, and I still don't have a lot of hope for this movie. Hope I'm wrong. I'll be there opening day to check it out. But right now, I'm just not on board. So for me, I got to sell it. Schnapp, what about you? I'm going to buy it because I actually had sold the entire premise of Zootopia. It bugged me. Why do these animals, why are they all acting like humans? They're animals. So you have to buy into the, the, the fact that they'd all have the same clothes, the clothing designers. They'd make cars, which is like only humans. So it's like, all right, I have to throw all this stuff away. Suspension of disbelief. 
they're all animals, but they do everything that we do <sighs> with their specific personalities. I watched this trailer and I loved it. I actually liked the comic timing. I liked that they were cool with taking extra long. And in fact, I'd watch an extra five minutes of this sloth scene <laughs> if right. they even wanted to drag it out even more in the real movie. It just makes it that much more painful for any of us who've ever been in a slow conversation with anybody like, hey, get to the point, come on. But this is insanely slow because it's a sloth. So I loved it and the smile, you know, I haven't seen it twice yet, so I don't think I'd change my mind, though. It sold me on the entire idea <laughs> of the animals being the how you would expect animals to be in right. their environments. So if the DMV existed, it, it is <laughs> interminable anytime you're in line for anything and you have sloths handling it. That's trouble. So I, I, I buy it. This is a very concept that they had sloths manning yeah, it. It was a really good movie. It was a really good movie. I, mean, I, mean, that, I think you? people watch that trailer and are going to think that is so genius. I want to see what else is in Zootopia. What other animals run it? What other things that are supposed to be human? Like, I buy this trailer huge. And I had a leg up because I saw more of the, of the footage from here than just what we saw in the trailer at D23. So going into this trailer, I was hoping they showed the DMV mm. scene. They didn't show it in, in its entirety, but they didn't skimp it either. They showed us what mm. the joke was. They let it breathe. I like when a trailer can do that. It sold me on this movie even more than I already was. I can't wait to see Zootopia. I think it's going to be hilarious. And Jason Bateman and Jennifer Goodwin are perfectly cast as the fox and the bunny. Ashley, it kind of looked like somebody just oh told you Christmas gosh, was canceled when I said I that. I thought that you were going to buy it 100%. I think so that my, I my expectations for this movie, I don't know what I was thinking it was going to, the trailer was going to look like, but that was freaking hilarious. How relatable was that? <laughs> yeah, like, totally. we've all been in that position. It looks so funny. I love that smile. The now smile I'm actually excited for the movie. So I can't yeah. believe you sold it. I buy it. <laughs> all right, what's next? The first poster for the upcoming Jesse Owens biopic, Race, has just hit the web. The film is based on the incredible true story of Jesse Owens, the legendary athletic superstar whose quest to become the greatest track and field athlete in history thrusts him onto the world stage of the 1936 Olympics, where he faces off against Adolf Hitler's vision of Aryan supremacy. Race is an enthralling film about courage, determination, tolerance, and friendship, and an inspiring drama about one man's fight to become an Olympic legend. The film stars Stefan James, Jason Sudeikis, Jeremy Irons, and William Hurt. Schnepp, buy or sell this first poster for race. Well, I buy the poster and I also buy the trailer. They dropped yeah, the, the trailer, so fun, all of us yeah. watch the trailer and I buy that too. It's a great title too. It's really, it's a loaded title. It's about race. It's, it's about race. It's, it's a brilliant title. And it's a fantastic trailer. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I was like, why is Jason Sudeikis in, the, in this? But he actually, by the end of the trailer, I was like, okay, I see why they cast him. But I thought the way that they set everything up and they really make the stakes really high, that this, this guy is like putting everything on the line, his whole family and everything to go over there and basically prove the Nazis wrong. It's a fantastic thing. We know what happened. It's history, guys. This isn't spoiler. Get up on it. <laughs> um, so it's sort of like, it's a fantastic story about an amazing thing that happened. And like, it was basically like F you Hitler. You know what I mean? It was like, it's pretty fantastic. So I, I, I can't wait to see this movie. There's a scene in the movie where Hitler is up in the stadium watching the races and Brad Pitt sneaks in from behind him and kills him. <laughs> it's, it's, I know I just gave away a little bit. Spoilers. But hang in there. I wholeheartedly buy this. This looks awesome. This looks like the movie that I thought 42 should have been. And it was really weird seeing Jason Sudeikis in that. Mm -hmm. But I applaud him for yeah. stepping out, stretching himself, because you know what? That little bit of, of, of you know comedic clown that he is, touches of that work for that character. Like that scene when, he's, when he finally times him running and then he's like kind right. of shocked by it. Love that. And that line, though, we watched the trailer twice, and both times I got goosebumps. We said, there's no such thing as black and white. There's only fast or slow. And I was like, yeah, I was just like, I, I cannot wait to see this movie. Everything that I want, like I said, that I wanted 42 to be, and I, I thought 42 came up short in a lot of ways. I didn't think it did service to the subject matter that was covering. I feel like this one will, and I'm excited about it. For me, it's a big buy. Yeah, as someone with blinding speed myself, it's a huge buy. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the poster looks, the, the poster I don't love, but I get it, and it kind of looks like Jesse Owens was trying to do the Star Wars Force Awakens thing. He just couldn't get the, the <laughs> hand over to the eye in time. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that and the trailer. I'm really excited to see this movie. I really liked 42, and it has that kind of feel to it. Also, maybe even something recent like Million Dollar Arm, where it's a feel-good sports story that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of exactly what Jesse Owens was facing when he went to go do the 1936 Olympics, and Hitler's <laughs> literally there. If you have never seen the comedian Bill Burr does an amazing bit about what it was like to be Hitler at the 1936 Olympics, <laughs> it's hysterical. Check it out. This movie's going to be cool. <laughs> 
All right, folks. Well, listen, it is Tuesday, which means it's time for us to talk about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Now, normally we talk about half the films that are opening on Tuesday, and then we talk about the other half on Thursday. But since we're not going to be having a movie talk on Thursday because of the American holiday, we're going to talk about all the major films opening a wide release this week today. So, Ashley, what do we got opening up? First up is the Rocky legacy film Creed. Adonis Johnson, Michael B. Jordan, never knew his famous father, boxing champion Apollo. Creed, who died before Adonis was born. However, boxing is in his blood, so he seeks out Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone, and asks the retired champ to be his trainer. Rocky sees much of Apollo in Adonis and agrees to mentor him, even as he battles an opponent deadlier than any in the ring. With Rocky's help, Adonis soon gets a title shot, but whether he has the true heart of a fighter remains to be seen. Next up is Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Luckily for young Arlo, his parents and his two siblings, the mighty dinosaurs, were not wiped out 65 million years ago. When a rainstorm washes poor Arlo downriver, he ends up bruised, battered, and miles away from home. Good fortune shines on the frightened dino when he meets Spot, a Neanderthal boy who offers help and friendship. Together, the unlikely duo embark on an epic adventure to reunite Arlo with his beloved family. And finally, Victor Frankenstein. When the experiments of radical scientist Victor Frankenstein, played by James McAvoy, go too far, only Igor Straussman, played by Daniel Radcliffe, his equally brilliant protege, can bring him back from the brink of madness and save him from his monstrous creation. Mark, which of these films should audiences be looking forward to? Well, I'm pleased to say you should actually be looking forward to all three of these movies coming out. They're very different genres, and I had the chance to see Victor Frankenstein last night, and I had a lot of fun with it. I actually enjoyed watching the movie. The Good Dinosaur is Pixar. They crush just about everything they do. I know there's going to be one scene that makes me ball like a baby, and everything else I'll be laughing and enjoying the adventure, but the one you got to see is Creed. And as a huge Rocky fan myself, even if you're not big into boxing films or you haven't seen a Rocky movie, this movie is so worth checking out for the performances of Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone, who could get nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Imagine if you see Rocky win a statue for the 2015 Academy Awards, and the way Ryan Coogler directs yeah. Creed is unlike anything I've ever seen in a boxing movie or otherwise. You have great choices at the movie theaters this weekend. Get away from your annoying family and go to a movie theater. <laughs> Schnip, which ones are you looking forward wow. to the most? I gotta say, I'm looking forward to all three of them myself. I haven't seen any of them, but like just seeing the trailer for Creed, seeing uh, Sylvester Stallone take over the Burgess Meredith part. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really exciting, and that you a guys have all seen it. Buff Burgess yeah, Meredith. Way more rich <laughs> Burgess <laughs> Meredith for sure. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it. A uh, good dinosaur. I love dinosaurs. So this movie already that and Pixar together. I'm ready to see that. And of course, I love Frankenstein. Another Max Landis uh, production. Victor Frankenstein right, right. in the house. I'm looking forward to all three of them, and I I can't wait. It's a great weekend. I'll go on Friday. So yeah, I'm I'm so excited to hear you say that you liked Victor Frankenstein because mm -hmm. we've been enjoying the trailers and you were yeah. a little bit negative on the trailers. I so. did not like the trailer at all, but it's just one of those movies where you it, it, it takes more, longer than a trailer to get into the tone of what Mac and Boy and Radcliffe are doing. Right, and Good Dinosaur, it will not go down as one of the top five great you know Pixar films, but I, I feel as close to being able to guarantee anything, I can guarantee you're gonna have a good time watching The Good Dinosaur. It, you'll just smile and feel good the whole movie. It's just a very well done on that level, you know what I mean? So you're going to enjoy it. And I cannot wait to see Creed. Because of responsibilities, I haven't been able to go to any of the screenings yet. <laughs> but I cannot wait to see Creed. I'm so excited about it. You know, I remember I was in uh, New York a few weeks ago. Harloff was in Philadelphia watching <laughs> Creed. And I'm in New York, and my phone rings. You got to see Creed. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you got to see Creed. So it's like ever since that I've been super stoked about So that's the one for me. You know what I'm wondering is, so you have these three movies coming out that all have big audiences potentially what's going to happen to hunger games as box office day because it underperformed a little bit opening weekend and now mm. with all these options at the theaters i hope creed does well i think the good dinosaur is going to annihilate oh. maybe victor frankenstein sneaks up there it's going to be a real competitive I think good weekend. dinosaur is going to push peanuts out i think creed and frankenstein are going to push specter out mm -hmm. i mean it's like it's literally the, is hunger games going to be number one is my question so. yeah i i'm going to go out I'm, i don't think um I don't think Hunger Games can fall out of the number one spot with what's coming. I mean, Good Dinosaur maybe. Good yeah. Dinosaur could maybe push I it out. I think you're looking at 60s for Good Dinosaur maybe, and maybe Hunger Games can be less than a 50% drop off. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. All right, folks, we've reached that part of the show now. 
for mailbag. Here's how this works. If you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. <laughs> now, since we're doing this show live, and I know thousands of you are watching us live right now, we're going to save a little bit of time at the end of the show to take some of your live questions. How can you get a question on live? Simple. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video and tweet into that. Ashley's going to be monitoring the Twitter stream in there. She'll pick out a couple questions at the end of the show. But for now, let's get to the mailbag. So Ashley, what do we got? CG Photo 90 writes, hi guys, love the content. We all know Marvel and DC have all had huge success with comic books. The movies are structured as one big universe. Both Marvel and DC have what if stories in the comics. Do you think either one could have a what if movies with one of its characters? It's a fascinating mm -hmm. question. It really yeah. is. I, Because when you look, especially if you're looking at like uh, Red Sun and, and things like that, there are some awesome Elseworld, what if, whatever, one-off stories that would be so great to do, and I don't think they're gonna do them. No. I don't think they're gonna do them. I think they're putting too much time, energy, and effort into crafting and cultivating these cinematic universes that they have that I just don't think they're gonna step away from it and say, okay, now for this, everybody, let's put the DC Cinematic Universe on hold for a second. What if Clark Kent's shuttle from Krypton, his pod, landed in the Soviet Union instead of America? And let's watch mm -hmm. a movie based on that. I would be fascinated to see it, but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's another reason why I don't think we're gonna see a live action Kingdom Come uh, feature film. I think an animated thing would work really well for Kingdom Come, but um, I'll be all for it if they do it. I just really have my doubts that it's gonna happen. Mark, what do you think? I, I wanna see it so bad. As a kid, I love the What If comic book series, particularly the Marvel ones. The one where Wolverine joins Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is just an awesome, awesome prospect. And you're thinking about it, you're like, well, maybe if Hugh Jackman isn't gonna be continuing the X-Men franchise, maybe we could do a standalone What If Wolverine movie. I, I, th these things are such big productions and it's so hard to get these things made and they cost so much money and they depend on such big box office numbers that I don't think it's gonna happen in a cinematic universe. However, Netflix is a great landing area to do a different unique take on what we already have. So maybe you get some what ifs on Netflix. I say hard for me to even think they do it on Netflix because they're, they're supposedly also sharing the universe too. So it would be tough. You know what else would be good? I'm, I'm thinking about the DC stuff, but Marvel stuff too. Like how cool would Marvel zombies be? Right. How cool would Deadpool kills the Marvel universe? How cool would yeah. that mm -hmm. movie or be? Or Punisher kills the Marvel universe. And oh, then yeah. Punisher and Deadpool kill each other. Oh my God. Anyway, what, what would you, th do you well, think this is, how could this happen if it did? If it did happen, we'd have to live in a multiverse in another dimension because it'll <laughs> never happen. Uh, because the, I mean, honestly, the way I look at all of the comic book movies are they're already Elseworlds. They're Elseworld adaptations of the comic books. What they are is the cream of the crop of the stories that have been told for years, decades, and then they make a movie and it's like an amalgam of what is some of the best or current things about those characters. So I've never looked at like the Batman movies, anything other than, oh, that's the movie version of the comic book. And the comic book has such a rich history, like 60 years, 75 years now of Batman. It's, it's incredible how many different versions of Batman there are, how many amazing stories there are. So for me, the movies are always, have have always been an Elseworlds. Are we gonna get these what ifs? Hell no, we're not gonna get these what ifs. In fact, what happened now, because the movies are such a giant juggernaut, that they've reverse engineered what comics are. Now comics cater to the movies. Yeah. So yeah. all the, that's why you're seeing Marvel coming out with a new Civil War. Wait a minute, didn't they already do a Civil War comic book series? That's what inspired the Captain America Civil War. Yes, I know, but so many people who don't read comics are being introduced to comics by movies that it's reverse engineering and they're, re, they're basically retelling number ones again yeah. with the movie movie storylines and and I don't, I don't know if that's a bad thing I think it's you know it's it's kind of like in the middle zone right now we need to keep creativity going with comic books that's how you got that's how we have that rich fabric that universe of DC and Marvel characters is because of the ability to create brand new characters when you stagnate and keep redoing the same story again and again for what your quote-unquote new people are new viewers or new readers you get a mixture so I don't know if we're gonna get any else worlds so to speak or what ifs but I think what we are going to see is a, a, a better synergy with the way the comics and the movies interrelate. Okay, so. see, I, I got it, though. We can do a what if, and it can be Fox's movie, and it can be called What If We Didn't Crap the Bed with the First Fantastic <laughs> Four reboot. Let's do it again. That's your Fantastic Four, too. Bam. I like, I like it. it. You're on. All right, what's next? <laughs> Bobby writes, hi guys, I recently saw you guys buying the new Baywatch film news because, and I quote, The Rock is in it. And my question <laughs> is regarding this. Guys like Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel are so likable off screen. Their 
there are some people who would watch their films regardless. Does this mean guys like Russell Crowe, who have a reputation of being difficult, maybe need to sell their films a bit more? Do you think a likable off-screen persona is vital to make an actor's film popular nowadays? And if so, who's to say they're not acting off-screen too? Thanks, guys. No, it's not essential. Um, I, my my personal opinion, Jake Gyllenhaal is rather unlikable off screen, um, but he's great, and I'll watch anything that dude's in. And his films have have they can succeed just like anybody else's film can succeed. But I do believe it is a factor. It is absolutely a factor. And I'm so glad you brought up in your email Russell Crowe because I believe, other than Daniel Day Lewis. I believe Russell Crowe is the best actor we've had in the world in the past 15 years. I, I, I really firmly believe that. And I believe that the only reason more people don't see it is because of how freaking unlikable he is. I mean, he's he's been very difficult. He's had a lot of off, you know, off screen difficulties where there's, you know, hitting guys in the head with phones or whether it's like <laughs> launching a country album or I, I mean, all the other <laughs> adventures that Russell Crowe has been on. He time in, time out, without exception, always brings a 100% A game to every movie he's in. Even when he shows up in a movie like Man with the Iron Fists, it's like, holy crap, he felt out of place because he's so good in this movie. Like, that guy should easily have three Oscars on his shelf right now mm -hmm. instead of the one that he has. And I think a part of that is people are just damn sick of him. Um, and I think that's part of it. And you're absolutely right. Part of the reason we gravitate, I think, to The Rock's movies is because he is, we love loving him. People love loving The Rock. He's so charming and friendly. And, you know, we've met, we've all met him several times, and he is just exactly what you think he would be. That billion dollar smile, that charm, that wit, remembers people's names, which I always find amazing when celebrities can do that. Um, he's just that type of guy. Vin Diesel, same thing. Like, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's constantly active on social media, always makes time for his fans, all that kind of stuff. And while I do not believe it is essential, anymore. I don't believe it's essential right now. It's certainly a part and it's becoming a bigger part. And whether that's a good or a bad thing, I don't know. I'll let you decide that. But anyway, Schnepp, how do you see this whole thing? Well, I mean, he nailed it with The Rock. I mean, he's such a, a fun personality off screen that anything he does on screen, it's kind of fun to watch him because you're like, he's playing a version of himself. He's like acting is like either character acting or then you grow into becoming a personality of playing yourself in different roles like Jack Nicholson. He's sort of grew into just being Jack, you know? And it's like any movie he's in, you're like, oh, Jack Nicholson is playing himself in something, you know? <laughs> so I think that's kind of the rock. I mean, he's done different films like Faster where he plays like a darker version of himself or a more slightly more evil or something. But I mean, I think the character actors like that that grow into being like personality actors like The Rock or Vin Diesel, they have an easier time, I think, falling into a, a, a position of a, a role. They could also fall into a bad position where they have a series of clunkers like The Rock was. I, I can't remember now who played the Tooth Fairy. I think it was The Rock. Oh, that right? was The Rock. Was yeah, in that so deal with Disney. That didn't yeah. fit with his personality. Like, why are you doing The Tooth Fairy? That's goofy. A bad comedy. It was just that corny kind of comedy where you're like, you don't want to see him in that. And no one went to see that movie because no one wants to see The Rock in that kind of movie. So I think Russell Crowe is a different kind of actor where he still plays characters and he's he inhabits the role. Like, uh, what was that cigarette one where you think he gained a lot of weight? Uh, inside Man. Insider. Mm -hmm. no, insider. insider. Yeah, Insider. insider. Yeah. Fantastic he, A movie role. in which he acted circles around Al Pacino. Right. Not an easy is, yeah, thing not to easy. do. So, I mean, th those the different kind of caliber of actors, but I agree with you. What Chuck and phones at people, you know, I don't know about the country song stuff, you know, but it's like, <laughs> you know, being like some kind of a jerk face is like, that's going to not really help you out when people, oh, what's this guy's next movie? Yeah, the last time I read about him, he was like, you know, doing some stupid shit in real life. I mean, that, that has a toll, that takes a toll. You and you know? know what else hurt? I mean, uh, we forget about this now, but who for the longest time was America's sweetheart? It was Meg Ryan for the longest oh, time. Remember, right. there was a, for, maybe some of you might be too young to remember this, but there was a, a, an age when Meg Ryan was America's sweetheart. I yep. mean, that was it, and she had this dream Hollywood fairy tale marriage to Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid, and then she did a movie with Russell Crowe oh, and boy. ran off with Russell Crowe, yeah. and that ended her. Destroyed marriages. It, it just, it destroyed destroyed her, career, her career got destroyed. I yeah. think it just went even more to the thing about people looking for an excuse not to like Russell Crowe. I mean, yeah. that was that was a heavy one. Anyway, Mark, how do you see this whole yeah, thing? Well, Jennifer Aniston 
Everyone's raising their hand like, I know two people who did that. <laughs> you still like them? Okay. <laughs> I think sometimes it just does depend on some superficial things. Like if you just see somebody smile and you're like, oh, yeah, I bet I like them. They could be a dick behind closed doors. You don't know. I'm horrible to work with when I'm not on camera. <laughs> Having said all <laughs> it's that. It's true. Nothing it's like, true. like Tommy Lee Jones and Kevin Costner don't look like dudes you really want to hang out with. But I love seeing their movies. So if somebody is, isn't is cool, off, it doesn't make me not want to see their movie. But if I like somebody in real life, or at least I think I do, like Jim Carrey, I've had the pleasure of meeting him, the late Robin Williams, somebody like that, I will want to see their movie more. So it never has a negative effect on me, it only makes me want to see some people's movies more. Yep. The first thing he does every day, he walks in, goes into the fridge, mm -hmm. finds my lunch, and the first <laughs> words out of his mouth every day are, is this your lunch? <laughs> well, now it's mine. That's, That's right. what he does <laughs> every do day. <laughs> yep. And I, see, and I am, Ellis, can't do a, anything about it. He's a real it. monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Delicious McRib. <laughs> All right, folks, I said we would take a little bit of time to take your live questions, and we're going to do that right now. Once again, make sure you're following us on Twitter, at Collider Video. Send on in your questions. Ashley's going to pick out a bunch, so I suggest sucking up to her. Mm -hmm. So, Ashley, what have you picked out today? Derek Snyder writes, I need to settle a debate. Die Hard, Christmas movie or not? Please help. Yes. Yes, yeah. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. There's Definitely. there's lots of jolliness and and there's mistletoe and there's, uh, there's a now Christmas I have a machine gun. Party. Ho ho ho! <laughs> I mean, it's as Christmas as you know. I actually do. It yeah. is a it is a Christmas tradition. That's usually when I watch Die Hard every year. Now is at Christmas. What do you guys think? Yeah, but the thing is, if you're having a debate that we need to settle with you and your buddies at a bar, that's one thing. <laughs> if you're debating with your grandma over which Christmas movie to watch, right. she yeah. might opt for a Christmas yeah. Carol. I think yeah. she wins. Yes. Grandma wins. Yes, yes, Christmas story. It is. No, okay. What's next? Noah Damron writes. What are your guys' pick for best picture so far? Well, I mean, there's still a bunch. I mean, uh, Revenant is getting seen today. Um, there, I mean, okay. For me, it's still down to the two. For me, it's either Inside Out or The Martian right now. Uh, I have not seen Creed yet, and I'm hearing from a lot of people that's going to be a solid contender. Uh, obviously, The Revenant. Obviously, Hateful Eight. Obviously, so there's a, uh, still a few players to come down the pipe. Uh, a little movie called Star Wars. But for me right now, it would either be Inside Out or The Martian. What about you, Mark? Uh, my answer could change in five hours after I see The Revenant. But <laughs> uh, right now, it's either The Martian, Creed, or Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm going to take The Martian. I'm going to take The Martian slightly over Creed and Ex Machina. But God, they're all great movies. Yeah, Jeff, I have not seen Revenant yet. But I'm going with Mad Max Fury Road. For me, right, that right. was the movie that I enjoyed the most in the theater so far this year. So, I mean, you know, hey, a lot of people did, had problems with it or whatnot, but for my personal choice, I just think of that movie, I get smiles. I'm like, you know, those Chrome boys or whatever, like, <laughs> I live, I die, I live again. Just the weirdness of it. It was so much fun. Witness! Yeah. And to, and to see that, the return of George Miller in such a vibrant way. I mean, you know, yeah, he did Happy Feet and a bunch of other weird, you know, movies that I don't want to see. So to see him return <laughs> to this weird, desolate, post-apocalyptic future and do it again, but better was fantastic. So seeing that kind of amazing filmmaking skill just on fire. So that's what I love about that film. That being said, The Revenant is the one that, you know, I'm like, hey, hang on a second. Yeah. Haven't seen that movie. Yeah. The trailers freak me out about how excited I am to see it. I'll, so. I'll, I'll text you my take. Yeah, let me know what you think, <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> Ellis gets to see it first. All right, what is next? Carolina Roddy writes, will Gambit take over Fantastic Four 2's former release date? I don't. I think it's got a release date, and I think they're very happy with their release date. If I'm not mistaken. No, they did move it. They moved it from it's out of 2016. I know, but they did. But they but they oh, planted they? it. I believe okay. they did plant it. In right in 2017, I believe. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Fantastic Four Two was slated for 2018. No, no it was it was, it was June 9th, I believe, 2017. You know, why don't I just look right? It well, up? it makes the PR job easier for Fox if you just want to put out Gambit and just don't worry about that Fantastic Four Two right. disaster. I'm really looking forward to Gambit. Yeah, you know that, that could be that could be really really another tentpole. If Deadpool does well, they already have X Men, but maybe some of the core X Men that we like, like Wolverine, are going to be leaving that franchise. You need to introduce new characters we fall in love with. Gambit could be that dude. He's charming. All right, what's next? Christian Listorp writes: I'm in Sweden and want to ask why TFA premiere is the 16th of December here, 17th in the UK, and 18th in the US. It's, it's their marketing strategy. It's their rollout strategy. They like to build up some buzz overseas first. That's become a new thing in the past six or seven years, yeah. is they like to create buzz overseas first 
so that when it gets here, it just kind of explodes. Disney as a whole, with their various branches, has kind of been employing that strategy lately. I am not happy about it, but I totally get it. Your guys' thoughts? Well, it's also well known that Swedes have dirt on the mouse. They have actually Minnie Mouse and Goofy <laughs> making out. They don't want Mickey to get word of it, so you guys get the movie first. I hope you have fun with it. Yeah. What it was the movie? <laughs> this is going back a couple years now. When we were still doing movie talk. Right in basically the storage closet at the uh, Burbank 16, sure. <laughs> there was a movie that you were right beside yourself that you hadn't had a chance to see it because it opened overseas. And it, do you remember oh, that? Oh, that's right. And all the Swedes were bragging. That's, that's right. Snip, and it was the snip, Swedes. Snip, I got to see it before you. <laughs> I'm a Swede and I got to see it before that, you. That's a really horrible a accent. I, no, I'm not doing a Swede. I, I'm just doing a, I got to see it before you bragging jerk that those, you Swedes oh that love me, gosh. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about the angry, hateful Swedes who get to see Star Wars first. You better shut up. I think, no they, I think Avengers that came is, that is yeah. what what jerks sound like. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah, get to see it before <laughs> you. Yeah, they, they, All they of our that. equipment <laughs> is from <laughs> IKEA, so you can't hate <laughs> yeah, that much. Basically I know. everything yeah. we are on the, here. The squirrel IKEA. long <laughs> desk and the Opsonk, uh, you know, <laughs> basket case and the Fimblar uh, bookshelf. Thank you, Swedes. Uh, I, I just, I just gonna say it's uh, officially listed. Um, uh, October seventh, two thousand sixteen, is still the officially listed release date for Gamut. Oh, so just cool. okay. And they'll probably get it first in Sweden too. Yeah, you <laughs> Swedes. Get everything first. <laughs> All right, what's next? I have to ask this question because his name is so great and the question makes like no sense. <laughs> but Mr. Mackie Cheesy Dog writes, <laughs> what Disney films would you like to see made live action? I think Lilo and Stitch would be beautiful. How would you make a live action Lilo and Stitch? I don't know. Uh, no, you can, you, no, you can, can do, do Lilo it. and Sif live action, but you just have to understand you're going to have to have a Jar Jar in there. You're going to have to have a, <laughs> yeah. a complete CGI character. Gremlin. Right. It could be a Gremlin yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, uh, Stitch will have to be. Uh, I want to see the CG. Black Cauldron done live action. That's like That's a weird Ooh. Disney uh, failure that they could redo as I a live the action Black film. Cauldron. When yeah. I was a kid, I loved watching Sword in the Stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a cool movie. It's been told a bunch of times live action. Maybe Disney could do it right. They're actually already making the one that I really want, which is The Jungle Book. Well, they're making about, here's the thing, we almost don't even have to answer the question because in about four years, they're all going to be live action. <laughs> right. I, I honestly, I think it's about six. I think they got, like, they got like six in the pipe right now that are coming. I think leading yeah, up you're right. Beauty and the Beast. So pretty soon they're all going to be live Black action. Black Cauldron is Disney, am I right? I believe right. so. I believe okay. it is. Okay. All right, what's next? Michael Sanders writes, do you think we'll get an animated feature film of the Bernstein Bears? Mm, great. It's you know what? Bernstein. Bernstein. Oh, God. <laughs> Bernstein. I will say no, but I also, if you had asked me the question two years ago, do you think we will get a Paddington live action movie? I would have said no at that at the time too, and we did get it. So look, in the ever searching hunt for valid IP mm. that still has some recognition value, you can't write, I, I mean, I don't think it'll happen, but it's certainly possible. Mark, what do you think? I mean, they're making a Pez movie. You know, <laughs> they're making an emoji movie, making yeah, an right. Angry Birds movie. Why not? Tetris. Yeah. What's happening to this planet? The adventures of <laughs> Father Bear and Mother Bear and Brother and Sister Bear. They never yeah. like, took the time to name themselves, probably because right. the bears are just trying to survive. But but you make it adventures. really dark. Yeah. Like yeah. Brother Bear is hooked on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> He's hooked on bear heroin. Yeah. Oh. Barrowin. <laughs> Man, I can't get enough shots of this barrowin, dude. <laughs> so many childhoods just oh. collapsing. Oh, uh, he's selling Heroin dates with his sister to pay for his addiction? <laughs> now I really oh want to I want to see this Dark. movie so bad. <laughs> totally live action. <laughs> <laughs> Father Bear's home. Who <laughs> wants it first, kids? That's right. And oh, add a couple of really dark songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sounds let's great. totally destroy our fond memories of this <laughs> wonderful thing. Just call it Barrowin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's take two more. What's okay, next? Isaiah Gonzalez writes, do you need to watch original Rocky movies to enjoy Creed? Uh, Mark, I'll let you answer this. No, you do not. It will enhance your enjoyment of it. You'll see more things in Creed. You're like, oh, I remember that, oh, that. But if you've never seen any of the Rocky movies, go see Creed. Have a blast. Enjoy the hell out of it. All right, last question of the day. All right, the Babalook writes, any news <laughs> on the Lance Armstrong biopic with Ben Foster? We got a trailer months ago, but we haven't seen anything mm. since. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Aren't you there know? like five Lance Armstrong movies that are being there's made? There's a few in the pipe. Yeah. Then there's, there's also a documentary that's already out that's fascinating right. if you haven't seen it. The Ben Foster one, I was like, how is he going to pull off Lance Armstrong? Then I saw the trailer and I'm like, oh, he that pulled is off Lance, Lance Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm very excited to see that. I wasn't sure what the release date was. Were they saving it to position it for Oscar? Or 
or is it for 2016? Well, okay, it is listed as having been released. It's it was Good called boy. it's called the program is the name of it. I remember that, and it says it was released in France uh, on September 16th. So maybe let me see if there is an American, an official American release date in Canada. It was released September 13th. Wow. So uh, all that means the, it the, did not get picked up over here. Canadians yeah. getting it uh, getting it first, and I do not. I can't see an American release date. I, I don't think it, get to, it didn't get distribution here. Hmm. Yeah, throw it on December 18th. Nothing else comes out that week. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Sisters right. comes out. Sorry. And the Chipmunk movie comes out. That's right. Lest you forget. Stepping How on can... toes. Already <laughs> got my tickets for the Chipmunk movie. <laughs> it's gonna, it was very difficult ticket it's to right. come by. Really hard to get. Had to pay a lot of money. All right, folks. That'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget. Lots of great films playing out at our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater show time and, of course, your movie to get information. What's all this fuzziness on my face that would be 10 times longer if it was any other man at this point? Um, this is uh, to just remind us all that it is November. It is no shave November. It is just our way of raising awareness to remind us that, hey, maybe this is a good time to donate a little bit of money to cancer research. There's very few things you can do that is more worthwhile of your time, your energy, and of course your finances. Just one day this week, skip going to Applebee's or skip go, going to McDonald's or going bowling or whatever it is you young kids like to do these days and say, I'm going to take that money. Hey, you want to get in really good with the girl you're going out with this week that you want to impress her say hey you know what i thought maybe we'd skip dinner we'd go straight to the movie tonight and we'd take the money we we're going to spend on dinner donate to cancer research you are, ah see uh, see oh, that's a good one see that's that? a good one see it works in it your benefits favor. everyone i'm not trying to help cancer research i'm trying to help you get laid <laughs> so anyway that's uh, that's no but see in all seriousness donate to cancer research guys that's what it's all about uh and i want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me sitting over here on my left mr john schnepp Schnepp, where can people find you online? I was just uh, over in the corner, like shooting up some barrowin. You missed it. <laughs> <clears throat> you can find, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. You can get my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to www.tdoslwh.com. We have a special Thanksgiving. You could uh, buy the film right now. We lowered it 10 bucks. Get the digital download and support independent film. And of course, over here, Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can people find you? Well, when I'm not at a dirty Motel 6 with Mother Bear, you can find me on Twitter <laughs> at 5150 Ellis, also Instagram. I've seen The Revenant today. Day, so I'll tweet out my reaction immediately. I wish I could grow a beard in that time. Uh, wine <laughs> School on the chat board is ha hashtagging beards for Barrowin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course, our lovely host today, Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram, at Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. And of course, you can find me on all the various social media networks, specifically on Facebook and on Twitter by following me at John Campia. That'll do it for us, guys. Listen, don't forget, if you love your entertainment news, make sure you bookmark Collider.com. Visit the site every day to be cut kept up to date on everything going on in the world of movies and television and make sure you come back tomorrow for our final episode of movie talk this week before we break for the holidays we look forward to seeing you and until next time bye bye hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider